Hi and welcome. My name is Phoenix. This is Chasing Limits on Shaw TV, the junior and U23 national team trials from beautiful Bow Valley Provincial Park in Kananaskis River, Canoe Meadows, Kananaskis, Alberta, Canada. Coming up, you'll hear from our sideline reporter, J.P. Parsonich, providing interviews throughout the show, but also alongside providing his commentary, executive director with the Alberta Slalom Canoe and Kayaking Association, Chuck Lee. Great to have you here. Great facility. Let's look at the leaderboard because this is going to be exciting. This is really exciting. We're looking at the junior category right now, and after the first day of competition, Keenan and Seamus are tied for the top spot right now. Only three competitors will go to the juniors, the junior worlds in Krakow, Poland. Well, just to take a quick moment here, because JP is Riverside with the guy tasked with getting these athletes ready. JP? All right, I'm here with Mike Holroyd, head coach of ASK. What's ASK, Mike? Uh, ASK is Alberta Slalom Canoe Kayak and we're the uh, provincial organization that uh, is responsible for slalom in, Al in Alberta. Okay, awesome. How many members do you guys currently have? Um, in our high performance group, we have about a dozen athletes that are training full time. Okay, wow, and you guys train out here at Canoe Meadows all the time? Yeah, this is our, uh, our favorite location. We've got permanent setup here with gates and the rivers, uh, fairly consistent water level, um, so anytime it's on, then we're here. This is an absolutely fantastic facility. So if other people wanted to join ASK or look up ASK, how do they find you guys? Well, so the progression, the easiest way is to start out with one of the clubs. So we've got um, about a dozen clubs around the province um, through the Alberta Whitewater Association. And so people start off with their local club, get involved, start in the pool, work their way up to, to moving water, and eventually they make their way here. All right, All right so high performance club, Obviously, you guys are uh, fielding a number of competitors here today. Who should we be watching out for? Uh, so, from Alberta specifically, we've got uh, in the women's class, Hannah Penner, um, Renee Oler, Jocelyn Taylor, Gemma Grotchmouth, some of the top... Uh, okay, some familiar names to yeah. people who have watched our shows before. Exactly. Now, uh, what about people from outside of Alberta? Where are they coming from? Um, we've, there's a good group from... Uh, Ontario, Quebec, uh, one one top girl from Saskatchewan here. Um, <laughs> Timing, haha, -ha, yeah. yeah. Saskatchewan um, so, so yeah, we've got, uh, I think we've got seven provinces, including the Yukon here, so it's... Uh, wow, okay, yeah. so this is this is a qualifier for world championships, yep. correct? Yeah. Okay, so who do you, who else do you see? Anybody else coming out uh, of the ASK group for world championships? Yeah, so in the men's class, we've got uh, Darius Remerton and Trevor Boyd and Tyler Gerber. Um, and they'll be battling the uh, the Ontario boys here uh, this weekend. So, and we'll be going to Poland in July with all of them. And I'm the head coach for that. So Excellent. we'll take them all. So I'm excited to see everybody race well. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time, coach. We look forward to seeing your athletes compete today. Cool. Thanks. All right. What you'll see today is the slalom kayaking K1 men's series. Start off with. Con with competitor number 40, Cole Oruski. Cole is out of Canmore, and uh, Cole is only 13 years old. So he is competing against these juniors and also the U23s. Uh, this is Cole's second year of slalom paddling, but he's been paddling with the Canmore Club for now four years. This is his home course, and he is uh, well on his way to establish himself as one of the top slalom paddlers in Canada. 18 gates to go through. If you touch a gate, you get penalized. If you miss a gate, you get penalized. And Cole is struggling at the initial start of this course. Yeah, he's taking some inadvertent touches here, and this is part of the learning process for him, as to how to control that boat, how to control his body, where to put his where to put everything in, in conjunction and how to keep his boat online. He did that nice, nice, very nice move in that series of gate six and seven. Coming here in gate number eight, he's got an upstream gate through the red gate here. He's got to get his head through that gate. Struggling right now, Cole has a number of penalties and we'll show you that in just a few moments here. He's also fighting time as well too through, through the third run of four today. Nicely done. That was a downstream gate in the eddy. Uh, all, Beside a very large drop, very hard to do. A number of judges on the side, of course, keeping a close eye on him. About 10 judges, would you say? Uh, there is actually one judge for every gate here. Okay, there you go. So we have 18 gates. Boy, that's a lot of people standing around watching this beautiful spectacle today as we see going through gate number 12, struggling. He, he missed, missed 13. That's a tough one for Cole. So he's coming back up to get that gate because he knows it's a 50-second penalty. So he does... Definitely wants to come back, get that gate, avoid the penalty. 
through 12 and 13. Coming up at number 14, it's an upgate. Struggling again to get through this one, trying to maintain himself so that he gets through the center par portion, so that his paddle, so that a portion, a portion of his body does not touch the gate. Again, you've noticed on the screen, he already has a 10 seconds stacked against him. Yeah, he's had five touches so far. The judges have called on him. So he's, got, he's down the last two gates here, just trying to keep it clean, get up through this gate, stay off the poles, and finish off a good race for him. Through 18, the final stretch. Now there is also a finish line as well, too, that we don't quite see, but as he paddles, he makes it, and the time will stop the moment he crosses a certain line. 225.36 is his time. 10-point penalty for Cole. Struggling through this course, and even struggling through some of the simpler parts of the course as well, too, Chuck. There's nothing simple about this. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Few examples where, and there's the example where he missed number 12, right. and he knew he had to go back and get it. A tough one for Cole. Competitor number 41 is Daniel Winter, competing in a summer sport. Daniel Winter. I see, I see the irony, Chuck. <laughs> Do you? It's a cold <laughs> enough sport, though. It can be winter all the time here. <laughs> beautifully, beautifully made uh, his way through a couple of gates here just to start of the course again 18 gates to go through a beautiful course again we've talked about the Kananaskis River it's been here for some time beautifully manicured as well too ideal conditions today not much of a breeze today so far we've got uh, breeze uh, wind can be a challenge wind could be a challenge if it was coming up but we've kind of protected here in the along the riverside so we don't have too much problems with wind uh, Daniel comes from uh, Calgary and he's uh, 14 years old. This is his first year as a full junior. Uh, last year he raced in the cadet class and uh, he's doing very well. No doubt he's familiar with this course as well too, Chuck, being a Calgary boy. He understands what he needs to do. He's probably practiced it thousands of times already. Yeah, with uh, Mike and uh, the team has had him out here lots. Uh, but at the same time, it's every one of these gates is different from what he might have practiced the last time around because the gates are positioned for each race and differently for each race. If you touch a gate, two points. If you miss a gate, 50 points. So far, two-point penalty for Daniel Winter as he makes his way through the second half of this 18-gate course. Yeah, Daniel's doing very well here. He's a little on the slow side, but that's just part of the inexperience and, and uh, developing his skill set so that he can actually improve and get that quickness through the gates, driving the lines, and staying on, on track. Reminder, only the head has to pass through the gates. If you hit the middle point, that's what your line you're shooting for. But once you get past the gate, Chuck, you're looking for that next one. Exactly. You have to actually line up two gates ahead of time. So when you're sort of going through a gate, you mm. need to sort of think about where Penalty you want there. the boat to be for that next gate. Through 18. A couple of penalty points for Daniel Winter for the most part. Not a bad time. 159.96. And it shows a two-point penalty. I believe we saw him touch it again. It might be a four-point on that one. We're going to find out in just a few moments as we take another look at Daniel through the course as well, too. Again, beautifully done. Number 42 is our next contestant. Uh, you know, there's one way to wake you up. A little, little cool water, that'll wake you up. Yeah, it's great to have that splash before you get down to the race course because you're going to get a bunch of splash while you're on the race course. So having that in your face just gets you sort of ready to go. Alsic Watt on the course now through the first couple of gates. Now on the up gate, looking, as you mentioned a few moments ago, Chuck, two gates ahead, really two gates ahead. Two gates ahead. You need to be thinking, oh, here's my line, here's where I need to be. So he's already planning this move here so he can get through that gate number five and then he's gate number six very quickly. And he didn't do it the way he wanted it to. So actually this is three and four, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, he had to, he would want to go directly between those two gates, but he didn't have the right body boat positioning so he had to sort of rejig re it, come back in, try something different. Up through five, he's got that little hole there, the white water there. He's coming up high on it so he can get a nice line through number six. It's a little bit slower, but it's a little more safe too. Uses pole to balance himself nicely. Mind you, he did rub against one of those gates there. That'll be a two-point penalty coming up in just a few seconds here. As he rounds around this tight corner, there's a rock in front of him, provides a bit of a challenge as well. Yeah, that if you don't get that boat turned in the right way, you're going to end up with your bow right on top of that, uh, on top of the rock. Now he's coming down to this downstream. Speed he's... picks up significantly off of that. <laughs> it does. And he did a nice spin move there. It actually didn't take too much time. And uh, away he goes. He's doing very well. This is, uh, Alsic is from uh, Chilliwack, BC. And uh, this is his second year of competition. 
and he's been paddling for four years now. So he's only four, 14 years old. I guess this is his first year of junior. He'll turn 15 this year. Through 11, now looking for 12 and 13. Takes a side approach to this one. Glances slightly off of number 14, uh, off of number 12 rather. Now he comes across number third, number 14. The up gate. Yeah, he's nicely right. through that. His time and penalty score you'll see on your screen. So far, an eight-point penalty. Looks like he tapped that gate with his paddle as he makes it through the final stretch of this course. Doesn't matter if you touch the the pole with your paddle, mm, okay, or your body, or with the boat. Oh, it's, it's going to count. It's going to count against you. And uh, but it only you can hit it five different times. It's only going to be one count against you. <laughs> that'll that'll be me the next time I'm in there. I'll probably hit it five different times as uh, Alsic Watt makes his way to the finish line with a ten point penalty, and there is his time two forty two. Probably a little disappointed with that one, but he will get another chance. This being the third of four runs as well, too. Right. So we're going to throw out the worst run of the of the four series race. And uh, then you're going to count your top three results against the uh, national team uh, ranking. Mel Robinost is now on course through the first couple of gates, looking for that line, the ideal line, hoping to go penalty free. But also you're trying to get you want you have, we want to have enough speed through this as well, too. That factors in as part of the scoring system as well. Right. So it's a uh, time down the course, plus your penalties added on. Uh, Mel comes from uh, Whitehorse Yukon. And uh, Miles has been paddling, I think I've been here with him for three years now, seen him for three years. Uh, but he's been paddling for much longer than that. He's doing a back off move here, going through, yeah, that's a nice back off move. Another challenge in front of him right here. He's got to make a sharp left hand turn, maintain his balance, get his line nicely through that gate. Yeah, he's doing very well here. He had that one touch, maybe two touches at the top, coming down to this hard number gate number 10. We saw a lot of competitors take that two second penalty or else having a, a, a lot of time lost in the eddy. So what we're trying to do here is get that through there, get up and out of the gates as quickly as possible. A judge at each, each gate as well too, Chuck? Yeah, a gate judge is uh, watching each gate so that they can see the guy in the blue there. He's watching that pole very carefully to make sure he gets his head through those gates and doesn't take a touch. Through the dreaded 14, this is where you really got to pump. But as you can tell, Mayo is looking for that next gate, the line that he's got to he's got to uh, pursue. He finds it, looks for 15, threw it cleanly, looks for 16, 18 gates through this course. Again, penalty time displayed on your screen, trying to make it under two minutes. It's not going to do it, but still, Fighting through number 17, and I mean fighting, Chuck. Oh, pushing. <laughs> pushing. He wants to get out he's, of here. He's and he, done. You know, it's, it's amazing how exhausting the two-minute race can be here. All right, there's your time there is. for Mael Probonos. Penalty time indicated there as well, too. Whew, he's exhausted at number three. He probably learned a few things off of that course as well, too, as we have competitor number 44. Now on course... And again, each competitor must wait until they get the OK that the other previous competitor is through the course. Once they're through the course, then they'll be given the, the signal and off they go. And Finley uh, Capstick is now on. Finley Capstick is out of BC. And uh, Finley is, uh, uh, this is his second year in racing. Again, he's only 14 years old. The BC program really sort of took a big uh, sink and they've been rebuilding for the last couple of years. And uh, congratulations to that team for coming back and having such a great youth participation. He's got to go up through this gate. So you can see him fighting to get his body back behind the gate and come up through it. If his head had gone backwards through the gate, it would have been a 50 second penalty. Takes a lot of energy just to pull it back there. You'll notice that some of these gates, you'll see a, 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 an X through the sign. That's because they're telling the competitors, no, don't go this way. <laughs> You've got to go the other way. And Finley realized that through that uh, one gate. Did a much better job here in this gate. This up, he's got behind it, coming up uh, through it nice and smooth. A little bit of back off there to try and get himself in position for that next gate. 
and down through the screen gate. Six, Slightly off his line. Off the line, but still he, he made it fairly quickly. So he didn't spend a lot of time in the Yeti messing around. You want to sort of get yourself in, up, and gone. And that's what Finley's doing here. Maneuvers nicely through 11. Now lift for 12 and 13. These are both down gates. Yeah. Through 12. The, they look deceivingly simple, but as you can see, he took a touch there. And it's because they're slightly offset. You just got to sort of keep your boat tracked and moving nicely through the gates. Clean through 14. Now he sets the sights on 15. Getting over, getting over, getting over. He's got to be behind this big rock coming up. He's going to sort of slide in behind that big rock there and then out the other side as quickly as possible. This has all been uh, sort of developed around the idea of boat control and developing your skill patterns so that when you go to a real wild river, you have this ability to maneuver your boat, put it in the position you want to, avoid any of the rocks or any of the big, big white water that you have to avoid. Through 18, there's the time, and there is his penalty score of plus 10 for Finley. This is a good Run result for Finley. You know, he's, he's done a nice job here, and uh, it'll take a, he'll take this forward and be in a better position going to Nationals in Jean-Pierre, Quebec later this summer. Nothing more daunting than seeing a gate about to hit you. He's bending back as much as he could just to make it through as we have competitor number 45 next on the course. What do we know about Richard Anderson, Chuck? Richard Anderson comes out of Calgary. This is second year racing. He's been paddling for about three years. So Richard is a fairly newcomer in terms of the, his development in the sport, but he's come a long ways in the last little while. I haven't seen Richard paddle since last summer, and uh, I'm really liking what I've seen here. Oh, we missed that gate. Well, that's not a good sign because we talked about it before. If you hit a gate, that's a two point penalty. If you miss a gate, it's a 50 point zinger. This so, might be something that Richard might say to himself, OK, I might just have this as a wash this particular run because he knows he's got a fourth one. So could he what, what kind of mindset is he th is he in right now? He's in the mindset, let's get all these gates. Let's, let's go, let's get, see what we can, what can accomplish this, this run. And oh, there's a lot of energy here to get back up for that gate. But at the same time, right, this is a learning experience for every one of these competitors. It is a long, gradual process to get up to the top levels. So as a 15-year-old working in this, in this system, you know, you're not expected to make the national team the first year. There's a rock in his way, Chuck. Can we go out there and help him? <laughs> Call AMA. Well, he's going to make it down the course, and he's going to do a very good job of it. He took a 50-second penalty. We saw that earlier when he missed that gate. Great challenges on this course as well, too, as we see his safety personnel. That's just on the top of your screen. Safety is paramount for all these athletes as well, too. Yeah, we're happy to have the, the rescue here. Uh, all these competitors have had lots of swims in the past. Uh, when I grew up paddling in the sport, they wouldn't even teach you how to to roll first of all they said okay you swim down all the rivers for the first couple of years and we'll teach you how to roll if you've done all that <laughs> the beautiful thing about this course is that the river is dam controlled so you'll know you get a steady release of water all the time it'll be consistent with every competitor and with every every race yeah you've got a clean line every time right so uh, you got a fresh course everybody's got the, the equal chance it's not as if you're pounding in somebody else's ruts uh, and you've got a great opportunity to put down a nice clean run Richard knows at this moment that he has uh, a number of penalties to his credit. So again, he's probably taking the time. That's why you see his time now over three minutes, probably just assessing what he needs to do for his final run, which will be coming up shortly. But at this point, he, he probably realizes, well, that one was a gear that I give that one away. Yeah, he knows, though. He knows he's, you know, like it's a uh, building process. And every time you take a run, run down the course, you get another experience. Here's an example of some of the uh, challenges that he faced. There was that one gate that you had mentioned, Chuck, where he completely missed. Uh, he has some struggles with uh, the rock being in the way. And yes. who, who put the rock there? <laughs> I did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the course, it's competitor number 46. What do we know about Austin Atkins? Austin, uh, this is his second year racing. We raced against him last year at the BC Nationals uh, in Chilliwack, BC. He, that's where he comes from. Uh, and uh, Austin is uh, looking good here. I, uh, I was judging with his dad and got a good chance to, to talk with him about where Austin is at and how he's doing. Great coaching from the Chilliwack group. Uh, their center of excellence in Chilliwack does a 
uh, an excellent job of working with the kids. Missed this gate number six. Mm. So he's going to go over to the side and paddle back up so he can get back up to gate number six. He just went a little too far across the, the face of that big wave. We that will cost him a lot of time. We noticed on a few occasions, too, that he's a bit uh, bow heavy. Is that one way of saying it? That we notice that the, the bow just sticks up every now and then. Is he is is it technique or is it that what he's... Uh, so if you put that boat on its tail like this, yeah. uh, that boat will spin a lot faster. So if you can get the bow out of the water, what happens is that bow, will, the boat will then spin nicely and you'll save yourself some time. Works like a rudder. It works like a rudder, but it also looks at, as uh, shortening the length of the boat. Okay. So if you can get the right positioning, you use that boat, the, the tail ends of the boats are very, very flat to the water. You can see it this, and, and uh, it allows the boat to spin very really quickly. Making his way through now, gate number 14. It's an 18 gate course. This is the third of four runs. You're watching the Slalom Kayaking K1 Men's Series here on Shaw TV. Yeah. Austin Atkins on the course now. Austin doing a really good job here. You know, he's only taken the two second penalties so far. He's being stay himself clean here. He took that long break at gate number six. That will that'll cost him dearly in terms of his timing. But uh, compared against Daniel, he's doing nicely. nice job here. Two point penalty so far as Austin makes his way through the finish line. And there is his final time for the third run of this race. A lot of uh, weight on the back of the, the back of the boat. Makes his way nicely through this gate. Yeah, great job done. by Austin. Nit Nick. Atkinson, now on course, competitor number 47. Nick comes from Calgary. He's been racing with us for about four years now. Uh, Nick is 17 year old. He's a very good freestyle skier, and this is his summer sport. We should keep in mind this is Olympic caliber timed event as well too. We, we've got the Olympics coming up in Rio, and of course this is the uh, for the a lot of the these individuals. They may have their sights set for something um, a lot more. Uh, down the road, such as the Olympics. Yeah, a lot of these competitors have got uh, an idea of the, the Olympics coming forward and, and being able to race at the Olympics in, at some point in the future. And so uh, this is the uh, uh, canoe slalom, canoe kayak slalom for the Olympics, and it's a great event. And let's, uh, let's keep this in mind as well, too. These athletes are extremely conditioned athletes. You can see as some of them go around these, these gates, they are breathing heavy because this is not easy to... Uh, to, to do, Chuck, I know you've done this course a number of times. Yeah, it's, uh, it's challenging. It's only a two minute race course, but at the same time, it's a, a lot of work and it's, uh, it's exhausting by the time you get done. And one little mistake will cost you so dearly, not only in terms of time, but also in terms of your, your uh, energy expenditures. It's like race car driving. This happens so quickly. You make a wrong turn. You don't hit that line properly. You are going to suffer so far. Nick, looking good? Looking good, but a few too many penalties for Nick. He should be in that uh, zero penalty mark. Nick has an opportunity to move up here. He's, uh, he's racing against some of the top competitors in the junior class. It's a very competitive field this year. So uh, he's got a little bit of work to do to catch that, that group up. You'll see Nick's time, and you'll also see Nick's penalty score on the screen. Of course, he's trying to keep himself penalty free. Not this time around. Nick Atkinson on his third run. There's his time, 205.07 with a six point penalty. Uh, he's feeling a little frustrated. He, know, he, he knows he could have done better on that run. Yeah. Here's an example of going through one of the um, up gates. Nice job here. Does a pretty good spin there. Gets his blade nicely planted in the eddy. Trying to find his line. A lot of competitors will be doing that. They'll be looking for that ideal line. Again, you're racing not only against time, but you're also cautious about not touching those gates or not missing those gates. Tyler Gerber is next one on the course. Tyler's out of Pincher Creek, Alberta. He's on my home, my home team. And uh, Tyler's been training with us for now four years racing competitively, but he's been paddling with us for more like seven. Tyler is 16 years old. He's uh, this is his uh, second last year of, as junior. He'll turn 17 this year. 
So that means he's, uh, when he turns 18, then that'll be his last year as junior. The key to any race like this is that you want to use the water and the conditions to your advantage as well too, Chuck. Yeah, and Tyler's got a, he's got a, a bit of room to catch up here. He's in, right now placed in fifth place. Uh, there are three junior places uh, available for uh, competition going to Krakow, Poland. So he's doing very well to touch there, but he's, uh, he's very competitive here. Trying to find his line for the next gate. Yeah, a little low here. Beautifully done. Well done through that one. He found a beautiful line for that. Tyler Gerber doing very good on this course. He's making it into the uh, middle part of the stretch of this 18 gate course through 12 and 13, nice and clean. Hoping for the same for number 14 as he whips around, looking steady, and he makes his way through there. Now he's off to 15. Again, a great run for this gentleman, Tyler Gerber. Yeah, Tyler's doing very good. Uh, we're really happy with the progress Tyler's making. He, um, the first couple of years of racing, he had some high expectations for himself, and he's been able to sort of put that in control and be able to control the emotions, and it's so difficult to do because this is so much in your head. Clean through 16, 17, clean through 18, looking beautiful for Tyler Gerber. He will be very pleased with not only his time, but also his score, 152, easily one of the fastest that we've seen so far today. Great job by Tyler Gerber. And he's spent. <laughs> he he is spent, but boy, he should be very satisfied with his performance on race number three. We have three of four, and so far, looking good for a number of competitors here today, Chuck. We have now competitor number 49, uh, Jacob Krajorucko, who struggles through the first one. That has got to be that's well, that's got to shake you up a little bit. It does throw you off when you hit that first gate. But then he did recovered nicely on gate number two. Oh, uh, there's a judgment call. Did he make it through in your no, opinion, Chuck? No, and he knows it, right? So he's coming back for it. He has the opportunity to come back in. He's got to go backwards through this, or go and downstream through this it. gate. He takes the touch. That's okay. It's two seconds. He lost a bunch of time there. He made that gate. A reminder, it's just the head that has to make it between the two gate poles. And that's what the, each of these competitors is hoping to do. Finding that line, using the water, using the river to your advantage. Uh, not quite the line that he was looking for there. Another penalty for Jacob. Yeah, Jacob is uh, out of uh, Chilliwack, BC. He actually trained for years in Saskatoon uh, with Brendan Curzon and the coach out there. But uh, his family moved to Chilliwack, BC this last year, and uh, he's doing very well. He's enjoying his time racing out of Chilliwack. A little more white water in BC than there is in Saskatoon. But without as much coaching support. So Jacob's currently sitting in about uh, seventh place behind Austin and, uh, and Tyler. Uh, but he's got an ability to make up some time here, perhaps get a, himself in a, in a better position if he can uh, move up the ranks. Number 14, a tough one, but handles it very nicely. Jacob having more success in the lower portion of this course than the upper. He touched the first gate coming out. Again, it's got to rattle you just a little bit, but he's gained his composure. So far, a penalty of 10 has been assessed as he goes through the last two gates, 18 gates on this course. There's number 17, handles it nicely, sets its sights on 18, and the drive, the finish home. Jacob looking for probably just about uh, 215, yeah, 214.79 with a 10 point penalty. Not, uh, not what he's hoping for. Yeah, next run, next run. Next run, there you go. You know what, you gotta say that to yourself. Here's the, oh, are you sure his head wasn't around, Chuck? No. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Taking the aggressive move is competitor number 50 through gate number one of 18. This is Trevor Boyd. What do we know about Trevor? Trevor's racing out of Calgary. This is his second race, second season racing, but he's been paddling with his dad for a long, long time. So uh, he his just, dad's also a paddler. His dad's also a paddler. Most of these paddlers actually have some sort of connection in the family, but Trevor's one of those rare young individuals that's got uh, some really good uh, opportunities to, to have paddled uh, for a long time. He seems tight on some of the gates, not going through the middle. That's what you're aiming for. He seems very tight on some of these. He's trying to shave off some time here. He's trying to catch the top uh, two competitors. He's behind them right now, and he's uh, in jeopardy. He knows he's got some pressure from behind him. Uh, Darius Ramaratan uh, mm. is uh, right behind him, so he knows, and, and also Tyler Gerber. 
He's got to put down some solid runs here. Otherwise, he's going to miss this Poland trip. Could you be too aggressive, Chuck? Yes, see there? He missed this gate. So he's got to come back around and do it again, mm. right? And so you can see that he just took a little bit of a too sharp of a line, and it's cost him time, it cost him a penalty. There's no question Trevor has the skills. He's making what we would probably say some foolish mistakes, some amateur mistakes that looks like he's a lot better than that, but he does make it beautiful. Oh, I was gonna say make it beautifully through that gate, but again, a sloppy mistake on 14 for Trevor. Yeah, Trevor's being just pushing a little bit too hard. He's gotta be a little more cautious and just sort of Except uh, that here's where I can be. Right. There's no question that he, he's got the time. He, his time looks beautiful here. Where he's suffering right now, it's his penalty score. And he knows it going through these last few gates as Trevor comes up with a, with a time. Just under two minutes, 158.46. But again, that penalty, oh boy, that'll bite you. Yeah, he's behind uh, Tyler. He knows that right, right now. He's He's got to do better than this for his last run. Very skilled individual, but there's an example of what you probably say is a sloppy mistake, Chuck. Yeah, well, it's 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 challenging coming down there, but he didn't he didn't set that gate up right to begin with. Something to take into the fourth run. This is the third of four runs you're watching here. It's the Slalom Kayaking K1 Men's Series here on Shaw TV. This is, of course, the Junior and U23 National Team Trials here from beautiful Bow Valley Provincial Park, Kananaskis River, Canoe Meadows. Oh. Next time you're here, you got to stop by. Okay, Seamus, what's happening with Seamus O'Connell? Again, you know, he's coming in, being very aggressive about that line, and then messes it up a little bit, right? So Seamus and, uh, is tied after the first uh, day of competition with uh, Keenan Simpson, and uh, he knows he's got to get in in a good time, being pushed from behind by Darius, Trevor, and also by uh, Tyler Gerber. You can hear the cheers coming out down the sidelines from the Ontario team. They're running down, cowbell him all the way down this race course. Really excited about Nicely his Nicely threw that up gate, sorry Chuck. No worries. Yeah, he's doing really well. Other than that little mistake in gate number two, Nice job here. Gets through that gate number uh, 10 very smoothly. And on down the rest of the race course. An upstream gate here. He's got to go up through the reds. Pushes through that nicely. And down through these, uh, these offset gates. 12 and 13. And then over in here in gate number 14, which is another up. Nicely through 14. Seamus is going to have a great time here. He can keep this up. It doesn't take too many penalties. Now He's through 16. Clean so far. Hard right on 17. Seamus comes out of Ottawa, Ontario, and he's uh, working hard to sort of capture that spot on the national team Look to go to crack up. at that time of Seamus O'Connell, 140-83. Unbelievable for that gentleman. Boy, he's got to be pumped about that time. Great time for Seamus. Fantastic. Again, we saw it here. He's he's finding a way to cut down his time. Always oh, so close to touching. Are they going to give him a penalty for that? It looks like probably not. Good for Seamus O'Connell. Should be very, very pleased with that. As next on course is Darius Remratton, competitor yeah. number 52 through the first couple of gates. Darius is uh, from Innisfil, Alberta. Darius had a serious accident last summer. He got in a hiking accident, fell on uh, some slippery rock. The rock came tumbling down on top on top of him. Wow. Broke his pelvis, broke his femur, broke his ankle. Oh, the guys on. who did who did the rescue on him said they weren't sure he was going to make it. And here he is back racing again. He can hardly walk right now. You watch him come down the race or walk up the race course, he is still limping. Amazing progress here in terms of his ability to get back in a boat and start to paddle competitively. Even though we see the athletes using their, for the most part, upper portion of their body, the whole body is being utilized throughout this whole race. Right, your balance is all controlled by your thighs, your hips, your your, your lower body, right? And so it's important for, for Darius uh, to have that control over him and uh, just amazing progress so far. For him to be on this course is an accomplishment in itself, Chuck. That's true. Now watch Darius, he's got a, a few sloppy touches here, and uh, we're expecting him to, uh, to, you know, just sort of stay in control and not push it too hard. 
but uh, he's pushing as hard as he possibly can right now. Is it a control issue that he has right now, or do you think he's still feeling a little bit of the, the effects of his uh, recent injuries? I think it's a little bit of both, right? It's, uh, you know, without timing the boat, you're having to, you're struggling, right? So it's, it's about your timing, your precision, ability to, to do all those things. Uh, it's always a challenge. And struggling see, through 17. That wouldn't be a struggle if he was in top performance. Still, look at that time. You know, we've been talking about most of the uh, competitors about two minutes. Look at his time. 150.86. Six-point penalty. Still, he should be very pleased with that score. Yeah, that's going to put him in uh, in good position right now, in the top two right now. Uh, and uh, he's uh, pushing on, getting getting through this, uh, this round to qualify for the junior team. Trying to find ways to cut his time. You Feeling geez. somewhat pleased by that, getting some uh, acknowledgement by his competitors as well, too. And speaking of which, this is a community. Let's be honest here. All of these racers today, they pretty much know each other, such as Keenan Simpson. They know each other. They're giving each other some encouragement along the way. Yeah, everybody's really happy to have Darius back. Uh, Keenan is, is uh, from Ottawa, but his family moved to Seattle uh, last year. So he has been training out of the Chilliwack with the Chilliwack Club. He's going to do this move direct going from three over to four without having to spin in the eddy too much. So that's gonna save him time. Oh, he misses this gate. He goes backwards through this gate. That's not gonna be good. Mm. That's gonna cost him 50 seconds. Okay, so even though he went through the gate, they still consider it, it would be a judgment call, obviously. It's a judgment call, where the it. gate swung and uh, where his head was at. Right. So if he goes through in the downstream direction with his head, then- You would have docked him 50, Chuck. 50. Absolutely. Wait, you're a tough judge. Got to be, right? You got to be fair to everybody, right? <laughs> Keep in but mind. To, yeah, go ahead. But he's doing really well. Yesterday in the race yesterday, Keenan put down just a blistering run, the fastest run of the day, uh, beat all the U23s. Uh, he has got the potential to be one of those top competitors. Uh, and matter of fact, he's got a potential of going with the, uh, the next generation group to the World Cups 4 and 5. If he can continue to perform like he is right now, uh, it's uh, up between him uh, and uh, Riley Penner, Andrew Musgrave, and uh, Seamus McDonald. Who's going to go to the World Cup 4 and 5? Well, it seems the judges do agree with you. They docked him a 50-point penalty for that one particular gate as he makes his way through the final stretch of this course. Through 18, it's Keenan Simpson. His time just over two minutes, 232.69. And there's that 54-point penalty. Chuck, that hurts. Yeah, it's got to hurt a lot. But he gets to throw that race out. There We're you only go. going to the, take the top three races out of the four. And so he'll throw that race out. And uh, then he'll have a, a pretty solid run next time. Let's hope for. On course now is competitor number 54 through the second gate. What do we know about Andrew Musgrave? Andrew Musgrave is uh, one of the new up-and-coming U23s. Uh, so he is competing against Riley Penner for a spot on the U23 team. And uh, there's only two of them competing, so that means there's an open spot still available on the U23 team. Uh, and it means we can probably take one of the juniors up to Krakow. They'll have to race against the older competitors, but it gives them a chance to be in the World Cup. Early stages of the course, Andrew's looking pretty good. Yeah, Andrew's a very solid competitor. He's got really good skills, really good boat control. You can see how he's in and out of that gate very fast. Uh, in the first day, he had some blistering times as well and uh, did very well. We've seen other competitors through those gates and uh, they struggle, but he's just, he is just whipping through this course. Great time so far as he has an up gate to contend with. Magnificently done. Sets his sights for 12 and 13. A couple of down gates as indicated by the green striping, green and white striping. Yeah, after the first day of racing, right? And we're, we're looking here at who's going to be on the U23 team, but also who can go to the um, to the next generation races, uh, the mm. World Cup, the senior World Cup races in uh, Tassin, uh, Slovenia, as well as in uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia. So all these racers are racing for the top three spots, and they will then be selected to go. Through 17, through 18, let's look at his time here. A beautiful time, a blistering time for Andrew Musgrave. Look at that, 139.66, the fastest so far on the course. Two-point penalty. Wow, he's got to be uh, very pleased with that run. Yeah, he's got to be really pleased with that run. Beautiful After time. After the first day, they were very close. Uh, Keenan, Andrew, Riley, and Seamus. 
So they are all pretty, basically tied after first runs. Competitor number 55 has just entered the course right now. This is Riley Penner, you'd mentioned him earlier. Yeah, Riley's one of our top competitors. He's uh, out of Lundbrook, Alberta. Uh, he is uh, part of the Pinchco Creekers Club and uh, very solid competitor. Riley raced up last year, placed second at the national championships uh, against all the senior competitors. And he's very smooth, but he's taken a very cautious approach today. Do you believe it's because it's his third run and he's thinking, okay, maybe this will be my throwaway run? I think it's, well, <clears throat> Roddy hurt his back last year. And so he hasn't been able to train very much. And so in terms of being uh, shaving off those times, leaning into the edges, mm -hmm. being very tight to the gates, he's going, no, 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 I just need to stay solid, Dave, stay in the middle of the gates. Let's make it a nice clean runs. Makes his way up through an up gate, does it very nicely, although he does have a two point penalty to his, uh, to his score. Through 12 and 13, 14 is a challenge. Close to the rocks, that can be intimidating for a lot of competitors, handles it very nicely. That's Ryan Penner, or Riley Penner, rather. Through 15, avoids the rock. Final stretches of the course. Through 16, up around 17. Yeah, that Ontario crew is kind of rooting against Riley because they would like to see uh, a full Ontario sweep of this uh, of this event. Boy, look at that time. Look at that time for Riley Penner. 145.9, four-point penalty. Very pleased for that. With that run, I'm sure he's very stoked about that run. Yeah, it was a good run for Riley. Unfortunately about the penalty times, right? he would have put him in first place if he could have stayed off the poles. Blame the judges, Chuck. Just blame the judges. No, look at that. You, you can see the ball moved. <laughs> there you have it. The leaderboard so far, Seamus, Trevor, Darius. Top three looking good. This is the third of four runs here on Shaw TV. We hope you're enjoying the National Canoe Slalom Team Selections 2016 K1 Men's Under 23. Uh, there's Riley Penner and Andrew Musgrave that you were talking about. Team selection. Well, here we go. The stage is set. This is Chasing Limits on Shaw TV. It's the Junior and U23 National Team Trials from Bow Valley Provincial Park here at Kananaskis River. More to come here on Shaw TV. I'm not special. Cancer happens to people all the time. I take one mile at a time, 26 miles a day. I want to set an example that'll never be forgotten. Sometimes, it feels endless. But the pain I feel is nothing. I've seen little kids in so much pain. Somewhere, the hurting must stop. Terry Fox ran more than halfway across Canada to raise money for cancer research. Every year, millions of people around the world continue the marathon of hope in his name. Wycom Solutions. A proud supporter of the Chasing Limits series and Alberta Amateur Sports. Visit wycom.ca for details on their full list of communication products and services.
All right, I'm here with Duncan Daniels, Chief Judge for the day. Uh, Duncan, tell us a little bit about your job here today. My job is Chief Official and Chief Judge at this particular event, and my role is to make sure that we have officials on the course and we're following the International Canoe Federation standards of rules and regulations for this event. Okay, so within the rules and regulations, there are penalties and scoring systems in place. Tell us a little bit about the scoring system and how that works. Well, first off, the goal is for the athletes to get through the course as fast as they can and to negotiate through both ups and down gates. A penalty is scored if they touch a gate, so that's a two second penalty. And we'll see, we'll see the judges on the course and they'll have one hand up, they'll be uh, signaling a penalty. If they miss a gate or go through it the wrong way, that's a 50 second penalty, that's a big one, that's five fingers up. Gotcha, I gotcha, okay, so obviously missing a gate is a bad thing, so as chief judge and official here, how many other judges are there on the course? We have 10 officials at four different stations across the course itself. At this particular race, we have 18 gates uh, from start to finish. Okay, and so primary concern for you guys here today is what? Safety, absolutely safety. We want to make sure our, our racers have a good race, but we definitely want to make sure everyone goes home safely. Okay, so obviously this is a dangerous sport sometimes. What's the first concern? When are you immediately out there saving people? Well, we're concerned if a, a paddler swims. Uh, and, and a couple things that we have in place, we have sa safety boaters on course and their goal is to ensure that they help a boater that's in the, um, in the water. We also have throw bags like this right here Perfect. and this is what each one of the stations have that and they can launch this out and they can uh, assist the paddler to get to shore. Alright, perfect. So, safety is the first concern. Tons of judges on the course. Duncan, thank you very much for your time. We're going to get into race time. Let's do it. Perfect. You know, Chuck, I know you've had a chance to meet up with Duncan a few times. He's uh, he's a veteran in these parts. Yeah, he is. Um, uh, he uh, came to us a little late because his, but his uh, kids started getting into slalom kayaking, and uh, Duncan has been a veteran uh, uh, judge with us, and now he's off to the Olympics. Uh, he's going to be judging in Rio. Beautiful. Executive Director with the Alberta Slalom Canoe and Kayaking Association, Chuck Lee, joins me. My name is Phoenix. You're watching the Slalom Kayaking K1 Men's Series. This is Cole Aruski. This is our uh, fourth race. So this is Cole's uh, fourth time down the course. They they changed the course after the first day, and this is it gives him a chance to get on this course again, paddle it again. He is uh, Cole is 14 years old, turns 15 this year. Uh, this is his first year as. Uh, Sorry, no, Cole is still 13. He's, he's still a cadet. He can't go to the Junior Worlds, but he's racing here anyhow. You mentioned the fourth run. This is the final run. Each competitor given four chances to go down this course. One score, one run is thrown out. Cole is hoping for a, a decent run on this one, struggling big time through this course. Yeah, Cole's uh, not on his lines, and you can see how quickly if you get off the line, you just can't get back to where you need to be. There's a frustration level as well. It gets to a point where you say to yourself, you know, I know I can do this, and oh, it can be just so frustrating at this point, Cole with already a couple of penalty points. Yeah, but when you're young, you sort of have this resilience to it, right? And you come back and you go, okay, next time. Right. Next time I'm going to do better. And then you, and you do. You do. So As we Cole's doing very well in terms of his, he comes out of Canmore, he races and paddles with the Bow Valley Kayak Club. Uh, so this is his home course. You can't help but be impressed by this course as well too. Built up the berms, you've uh, created the eddies and the waves that we see today. So beautifully manicured. Uh, a lot to be proud of here at Kananaskis River. Yeah, it's a great place to come up and walk, uh, walk down the river. There's a whole river walk to do from uh, Canoe Meadows. And it allows you to come up and take your book, Watch the paddlers. There's all sorts of slalom paddlers, some freestyle people, just recreational paddlers. It's a great venue for anybody wanting coming out for the day to, to be beside the river. You know, it's a great family sport too. Oh, I mean, so that's why Cole got involved as well too. As we see his time here, not a not a pleasing time for Cole, but again, it's a great family sport that a lot of these individuals want to be a part of. Yeah, and, and their families are very supportive of it. His, his dad now is uh, works in Kansas country. Uh, is coming out here lots and helping out with the judging. And we've got a beautiful venue which allows you to camp right beside the river. So it's a great uh, opportunity. And no doubt that Cole's dad will be giving him a little bit of advice about his last run. Mr. Winter is now on the course. This is Daniel Winter, his fourth run. 
His fourth of four runs. His fourth of four runs. Dan's going to do the spin move here at gate number three. Touches the gate. So that's still a touch against him. He'll take a two-second penalty for that touch. Let's keep in mind that each competitor is trying to get right through the middle of each of those gates. Any part of you or even your boat that touches the gate, as you saw there from Daniel, that is a two-point penalty. If you miss the gate, that's 50 points. That's that's virtually it's virtually going to eliminate you from the competition. That's right. And now, uh, you know, you, you saw Daniel in gate number five, he took a bunch of different touches on that same gate. He touched it one side, touched the other pole. Doesn't matter, you still only get the two second penalty, but you still take that two second penalty and that really counts against you. The weight of the boats will vary as well too. Some of these, are are they pretty much the same weight? They're all, they all have to be within a weight uh, category, so they all have to weigh, measure a minimum weight category. And depending on how old the boats are, they're pretty consistent. About 15 pounds minimum weight? Uh, Give or da, take? Da, da. I don't know that. Yeah, okay. Well, well, Chuck, you and I are both learning something right now. Danny Winter is on the course here. Six-point penalty is what we have. Some magnificent shots here from the crew here at Shaw TV. And again, beautiful conditions. The, the sun is shining. The, the water is flowing beautifully. Boy, this is a great spectator sport, and I'm glad. And we hope you're enjoying this today as you're watching Danny Winter through his fourth run. Right now facing a six point penalty as he makes it through gate number 14 of 18 gates on this course. Yeah, Daniel, this is uh, Daniel Palace from Calgary with the uh, Waterworks Kayak Club. And uh, he is doing a very good job. This, this is his first year as a junior and uh, he's coming along very nicely. At an Olympic level, how many gates are we, do we normally see in a run? Typically 20 to 24. More of a challenge then? A little bit more, but uh, just a little tighter and a lot more vertical drop in the river. So we've picked this site because it's the junior team selection uh, and it sort of gives us a little bit more flexibility, but still you, depending on how you position the gates, can create a very dynamic and very challenging race course. 230-37, 10 point score for Mr. Winter. As you can see, a few examples, boy, he struggled big time on this one gate. This is a the challenge for him, right? You see him hit it several different times, but he... Just on the outside of that gate, uh, suffered another penalty there as well, too. Right, so he's gonna come back up. You can see he's turned to go back up through that gate. Well, the competition is not over. Competitor number 42 on his fourth of four runs. Uh, Alsic Watt, now on course. Yeah, Alsek has uh, had a not a blistering run last time, but still, this is again his second year competition. We're going to see Alsek continue to compete, continue to be better, and uh, he's going to have to do some more work to make sure he stays online. Safety guide in the way, trying to get out of the way as quickly as possible. So he has to now go back. He missed that particular gate. This has got to be frustrating for any paddler. It's exhausting. But you get a chance to come back. You know what you did. Next race. Always the next race. Always the next one. Alsek will be going to Junkier, Quebec for the national championships in August. I uh, don't think he's going to be in a position to go to Poland but uh, for the world championships, but that's okay. He's got years to work and develop the skill sets, and I'm sure that given time, he can make that national team as well. No doubt he'll be reviewing this tape as well, too, realizing what he did right and what he could improve upon as well, too. This, is, of course, is the Junior and U23 National Team Trials. A lot at stake here today. Top three advancing to the national team, traveling to Poland for the World Championships in July. So still a lot ahead for each of these competitors. Yeah, every one of these competitors got races ahead of them. They've got summer season to, to race at. They'll have local home races as well as uh, uh, races across the country. As you can see on the screen, there's the top time. And there's the time of Alsik Watts. As you can see, he doesn't have the fastest time trying to eliminate the amount of penalties that he has in front of him. He has four of them so far. Making his way through the final few gates on this 18 gate course. Coming around number 16, looking for number 17. Here it comes. This is, boy, the end of the race, and you've got this to face. This is, that's a gut check right there. There's a lot of, lot of experience, a lot of timing goes into this, right? You can see that it looks pretty simple, but then when you get out there, just that little bit of centimeters off the line, 
puts you way off course. 229.69 for this gentleman, competitor number 42. He does this move very well here. Plops down right in the middle of that uh, the gates and is able to get out of that line very quickly. So all's not lost for that gentleman. And for this gentleman who is trying to make the uh, the top three, here we go with competitor number 43. We saw him earlier, male Provenost. Males again from the White Horse, and uh, he is uh, in his third year of uh, racing. He's got a lot of paddling experience. They do a lot of training up there together with, uh, he does that with Pelly Braun and the uh, White Horse Club. He's going the wrong direction. He, he knows it. <laughs> he knows it. He, he came in a little too high on that gate. You want to come in below the red poles, so it makes it easy to get up and out of. Right? Male with a big smile on his face, too, and he realizes, like, okay, well, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. A spin move here on six, and then it puts him in a nice position to get through seven without too much problems. It's a slower move, but it's actually a very safe move. So many ways to grow through these gates as well, too. Obviously, this is one way you can go sideways as well, too. But you, again, you've got to always be aware and alert of where your body is in relation to the gates. You can't always think about just moving forward. You also have to think about what is actually happening as it progresses. Where is your body in relation to those gates? And Mayel is learning that as well, too, as he struggles through a few of these here. Mayel's doing very well. We're expecting to see Mayel up on the national team here in a couple, of, a couple more years. So he's got some more work to do. But if he just keeps on working on it, building his skill sets, and doing the training. What advice would you give him, Chuck? Uh, just to be simple on the lines, right? To keep on the line that his coaches gave him and to uh, continue to paddle aggressively, but to stay in the center of the gates right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Finding that line. That's the challenge. Again, being able to read the river as well, too. Use it to your advantage. Mayel on the back end of this 18-gate course. You can see his penalty score. You can see his time as well, too. Each of these competitors is not only racing for time, but they're also trying to avoid any penalties as well, too, as he pushes them way his way through the final gate, gate number 18. There is his penalty score. There is his time score. 222.69. Is that good enough for Mayel? No, that will be well, well back. And Mayo's out of those three runs that he's put down earlier in the week. Didn't give him a chance to, to be competitive on this, this race. But that's okay because he's not looking to, to win a spot so much as to develop the skill set and to get that race experience. Well, we're talking about race experience right now. It's competitor number 45 having some issues. Richard Anderson through the first gate already giving a bit of a shoulder shrug with something he does not want to do. He's got to get focused right here, Richard. Or Richard has to get focused here, Chuck. <laughs> yes, it's okay. Richard's got lots of opportunity here to, to build some skills. He does a nice spin move there. Can he get through that? Yes. And he had a hard time with that last in the, in the race number three. So he's doing much better now. This is his second year of racing. Look and for the positives. Yeah. Look for the positives. Well, you got you to sort of build off what you got. He does a spin move here. Can he get back over to gate number seven? He's got some challenges to get over there. Up, up, up. There we go. Yes, he made it. Throughout the course of the race are the, we can see and hear some of the coaches alongside here following him along and just coaching him on. Do you really hear that as a competitor? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Some people are able to sort of hear that and sort of take it in a stride. Other people just, just block it, all it out. out. Yep. <laughs> Nicely done through gate number 10. He kept the line going, had lots of nice speed downstream, didn't spend a lot of time in that eddy. And he comes in here, a little on the low side, so it takes him a couple strokes to get back up. It's a hard transition from that far left side to this side, the near side, uh, and get down the race course. Facing a couple of down gates right now. There's 12 and 13. That should look pretty straightforward. He takes it with ease coming around for the uh, up gate right now went through a couple of down gates pardon me up through the up gate right now nicely done a lot to build from there through 15 clean around the rock looking for number 16 makes it through sight set on 17 and 18 you were saying that these competitors are looking for two gates ahead struggling through 17 right now this is not good. Exhaustion? Exhaustion, inexperience, right? So a bit of both right now. He's 
pushing for the finish. Things to build on for Richard Anderson. You'll see his time in just a moment. 2.13.45 plus four penalties added on to that. Not good enough for that gentleman. But again, a lot to build on. You're such a positive guy, Chuck. Keep it up. Yeah, well, we're trying to be sure, sure that everybody understands, hey, just because you didn't place well at this race doesn't mean you're a failure. There's, you got to look at all the things that you've done well and recognize that we've got 20 kids here from across mm -hmm. the country competing for the national team. You should be proud that you're here today. Exactly. This gentleman, I'm sure, is certainly proud to be here and hoping for a spot, Austin Atkins, competitor number 46. Now, he tried that move on his third race and didn't make it, so it's nice to see him actually re, re, retry that move and actually make this make it work for him this time. Again, came in a little high. A lot of these young, young competitors are, are coming in too high to that upstream gate on number five. And then they're having to back down around and get through it. So good to see Austin making the moves. But again, you need to stay on that line and be very precise about where you position your boat, how you get your body through the gate. You're watching the fourth of four runs of the slalom kayaking K1 men's series. This is the junior and u23 national team trials on course right now halfway through is austin atkins not only are you going for a quick time but you're also trying to avoid any penalty time two points if you hit the gate oh nicely done 50 austin. if you miss the gate that was a nice turnaround from austin atkins yeah he did a really nice spin move on that uh, upstream gate uh, in and out very quickly See if you can do the same thing here. Yeah, you know, I set for 14. This rubs that gate a little bit. Is that inches, yeah, right? Just inches. Austin's from Chilliwack, BC. This is second year kayaking. No doubt he's been on this course a few times training as well. He's been here all week long training to get used to the water, but he hasn't had this these gate configuration. Mm. So he's been able to practice with the gates, but not this particular gate configuration. Well, there's a good point then. So that the competitors, when they're practicing, they don't have the actual course. No. That's held up, and, and there's only released to the day of the, the event. They see the demo runs, and then they have to go and race it. 203.87 for this gentleman. Uh, a couple of penalty points for Austin. As, again, he was struggling. He came in too high on this gate. Yeah, with this up gate. Oh, my. And then he was ahead of back yep. down around beside it. Well, something to build on. Building on number 47, competitor number 47, Nick Atkinson. He is hoping for a spot as well, too, as he makes it through the first two gates cleanly. He did struggle in his third run. He looked a little exhausted. He's a little bit offline, but he squeaks through that gate. Another down gate, nicely through there. Down through here. See, he comes in below that gate, spins nicely, up and out, very quick. Nick's paddling from Calgary with the Waterworks Kayak Club. Been training with the coach here. Been uh, with us for about four years now as a slalom paddler. Come on, up, 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 get above that gate and be clean. Now he's got to correct his line. He's got to make sure that he knows the line he's going after. He seems to have a, the next gate in his sights. Thankfully, he's got enough time to react. He reacts very nicely through that around the rock. Nick Atkinson using the river to his advantage as he goes through another down gate. There's a challenge here. Can he get through this? Get be smooth. Finds the line. There you go. Nicely done, Nick. He's clean through the first little first 10 gates. So if he can stay on that course, we saw a lot of touches in the last mm. run. So he's Squeaks clean so far. Through that yeah. One. Through 11. Now has a sight set on 12 and 13. Two down gates back to back. One, two, beautifully down there. Focused on 14, hard, sharp left turn. Watch the paddle, watch the paddle. Nicely done. All good. Great run so far for Nick Atkinson. Yeah, this is fourth run. He's doing a very good job here. Time so far, not the fastest, but he's on pace for a really good time. If he can maintain this pace right now as he tries to maneuver himself around number 17. Pushes through 18. Come on, Nick, take it right to the house. Here he goes, here he goes. Take a look at this time. Look at that, no penalties. 2.02.81 for Nick Atkinson. Woo! He's gonna be happy with that run. I think that's a really good run wow. for Nick. Look Great example of, oh, close. 
So close, Chuck. <laughs> That's wonderful. This gentleman, number 48, we've seen him for do a few runs. Tyler Gerber is a little struggle on that first gate. Again, he can't let that rattle him. He's got to find that line. That's it. Oh, just makes it through. Tyler's that's what we want. Early we want, struggles, though. Early struggles. You want, to be, you want to be tight on the poles, but you don't want to be touching them. So you've got to have that very, very controlled measure of knowing exactly where your body and your blade are. You know, control that and put that very tight to the poles. Nice arm extension as well, too. Yeah, Tyler trained with a French coach for a couple of years, and it was a very uh, building experience for him and, and what he was able to do. We do have some top-level coaches here in Canada as well, too, and a lot of these athletes are learning from them, passing on their knowledge. Tyler's from Pincher Creek, Alberta, and he's part of my home crew. So uh, we're really excited about seeing the Tyler's uh, progress here. He is just off the mark right now. He has got to pull up his socks a little bit to make that into that top four or five. And right now he's sitting in number six place. Through 12 and 13. Close to the rocks. Ooh, trying to squeak through 14. Struggling somewhat through 14. Makes it through. Sight set on 15. Yeah, he's, he's been very consistent. Nice to see Tyler doing doing so well in his consistency. And he's, you see he's getting struck, he's getting tiring down here at the bottom. Great focus, though. He's maintaining a wonderful focus. Look at the time he's got so far. Doing really, really well through the 18th gate, the final gate. Tyler Gerber with a time of 150.45. Four-point penalty. Oh, boy, I bet you he would have loved that without a penalty. Yeah, that would have uh, been a big boost for him this time. Reaching nicely. We talked about his reach. And bow control. You see that rock is right there. He puts the bow right over top of the rock before he touches it. Handles it nicely. A lot of potential for that gentleman, but the race is not over. We still have a number of competitors who are hoping to make it to Poland. Yeah, this is the race that's going to determine whether or not they can get to the junior national team and uh, make it onto the Polish team. Make it to the Polish, uh, sorry, the Polish World Championships. Jacob Krajewuroczko. You said that very well. Yeah, and Jacob is uh, from Chilliwack, and he is um, just behind these other competitors. He's in that uh, number seven spot right now. Uh, and we will see if Jacob can pull up his socks uh, and get up uh, to that top five group. Slight time penalty assessed to Jacob. Through probably one of the most difficult parts of the course, too, with the, with the waves, just that, that transition. Yeah, it's a big transition, right? You're going from a loss of speed coming off that ledge and into that flat water, and you want to sort of maintain that speed through that flat water and back into the current as quickly as possible. You know, we should keep in mind, too, that this course a couple of years ago was devastated with the, the flooding that you may have heard that happened in southern Alberta. But where this course is today is a testament to the amazing folks like yourself, Chuck, and the rest of the team to put a course like this together. Just a fantastic course. Well, we've been, we've been very fortunate. We've got great support from the government of Alberta and from the Disaster Recovery Program to put this race course back together so we had some place to train and race over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Alex on the final uh, couple of gates here, making his way through 17, eyes set for 18. Finds his line, drives it home. He knows, he knows. Boy, completely spent, but exhausted, but should be very pleased with the time of 2.0199. Yeah, that's Jacob. a great run for Jacob. Here is just, again, it's inches as he makes, he tries to make his way around the gate. There's that transition we were chatting about. Beautifully done around there. A lot of potential for that gentleman. As we look now at, speaking of potential, how about Trevor Boyd? This is competitor number 50 on his fourth of final run right now on the course here at Kananaskis River, Trevor Boyd. Yeah, and if you remember after the first runs, uh, Trevor had a very, uh, first runs today, Trevor had a very disappointing uh, race, and we're going to throw that one out, and hopefully Trevor can put in a good solid run here if he needs that to qualify for the Polish 
uh, Junior World Championships. Just a reminder, we have J.P. Parsonage standing riverside when we finally get one of these competitors and we get the final score for you. So stand by for that as we watch Trevor Boyd attacking this course, aggressively attacking this course. He has not stopped paddling, finding beautiful lines as he goes through one of the uh, down gates, looking again for his sights as he sees the up gate as he makes a sharp right-hand turn. Will he make it through? He just... Squeaks by, but no, he tapped it. No, he got a two-point penalty on that one. That uh, brings his uh, penalty score now up to four. You want to keep that as low as possible. Through 12 and 13 nicely. Around 14. Let's hope he... Oh, he just... that. You know what? He's got His shoulders are too big. <laughs> that is a challenge. <laughs> Still a great time for Trevor Boyd. He is attacking this course, Chuck. Yeah, he's got to come down. He's got to get this race in, and, and he's got to be online uh, without taking any too many penalties. And so he's got to get that get that in place. Hoping to make the national team. This gentleman is pushing as hard as he can. Look at that time, 142.29. And again, keep this in mind. This is his fourth run. That gentleman's exhausted, but a fist pump. He knows he is close. He is so close. That is Trevor Boyd. Very pleased with his run here at the Kananaskis River. Good job, Trevor. As we continue the competition, here we go with competitor number 51. This is the fourth of four runs. The final run, if you will, taking an aggressive stance as well, too. Around number two, Seamus O'Connell. We liked him in run number three. Yeah, Seamus did really well in run number three. He, he won, that, uh, won that event for the juniors. And so now if he can put down another solid run here, it'll solidify his place in uh, the national team group. So Seamus is working against uh, Keenan Simpson. And also there's competing for a spot on the uh, World Cup team that's gonna go to uh, uh, Tosin, uh, Slovenia, and also to Prague, uh, Czechoslovakia for World Cups four and five. Fantastic. A reminder only, the head has to pass through the gates. These paddlers are doing whatever they can. They are exhausted. This is the fourth run. They've been, ex they're, they're expelling as much energy as they can through every single one of these runs and to muster up enough to get it through this. There's so much happening around you, but yet the focus, the concentration, the technique, all of that, you want to be on your game from, right from the get-go. Oh, his shame is just tickles that gate. Yeah, it uh, doesn't really matter how much you touch it, just a two-second penalty, but it puts you a long ways back. But he didn't mean to. Ooh, nicely done. Nicely done over 14. Boy, this kid's got potential. Beautiful through 14. Sets his sights, sets his line through 15. He's got three more gates to go. We're going to keep an eye on his time as well, too. He's trying to get below the two-minute mark. Ooh, he just rubs 17, maybe a little over-aggressive. Through 18, Seamus O'Connell, well, he achieved one thing. He's, his time of under two minutes is 144.88, but the eight point penalty does not bode well for that gentleman. No, that'll put him back uh, behind the, the rest of the group uh, on this run. And so he'll put him in probably second or third place right now. Great maneuver through 14. And through 10 there, down through that up in the eddy. Seamus O'Connell, remember that name and remember this name too as well too. It's 52. It's Darius Ramatton. Darius is from Innisfail. He's the guy that we talked about that had the serious injury earlier in the season. Uh, and uh, back in August, September, uh, broke his pelvis, broke his femur. Amazing story. Almost didn't make it. The we're fact so that we're glad to see him here. Yep, the fact that we're seeing him here today competing, not only participating, but actually competing for top spot. That's uh, quite a testament to that gentleman, Darius Ramratton. So Darius right now is sitting with a tie with Trevor Boyd for the third spot on the national team. Boy, no pressure here. One thing I noticed, though, that there was a... Uh, Darius not attacking the course as much as Trevor was, but we'll see whether or not, if he can maintain the uh, a penalty-free run, which apparently he won't, he it's still does have a smooth, chance. Right? It always, it's not always about attacking it. It's about using the water to your advantage. Sure. And so if Darius can be smooth and making everything sort of just nice and like that. Mm, Chuck, right, oh, that beautiful, with the, the paddle behind his head, <laughs> contorting himself around, willing himself around that gate, through 12, through 13, 
Darius Remratin now through 14 of 18 gates, mustering it, pushing himself through. Fantastic job by Darius at this point. He's got to beat Trevor if he wants to stay on the junior national team. And he knows it. He knows it too. Trying to be clean though. He wants to stay clean through these runs. Final two up. gates. Look at that time. Oh, he's struggling through 17. Looking for that final push through 18. He gets it. Paddling to the end. You can hear people screaming on the sidelines as well too. Why not? 147.69. Point two penalty, fantastic run for that gentleman. Will it be enough? Solid through this course. Giving it everything he's got. Darius Ramrat. Nicely done. With only a few competitors remaining, this is number 53 on the course right now, taking a cautious approach to the fourth of four runs is Keenan Simpson. So Keenan had a terrible third run. He was tied after two runs on the first day of competition with Seamus O'Connell, but he had a terrible, terrible run, number run race number three. So he's got to have a good race here. You can just hear the tap this paddle against the the gates a tap you don't want to hear well executed through that gate Keenan's having a run yeah he should be able to put down a really solid run here if he just stays simple keeps it through the up gate Beautifully done. And here his teammates cheering him on. The bottom half of this course, 18 gates. He's through, trying to get through 14. Clean, and he does it. Past the big rock. Slides over. Great time. Look at his time so far. Fantastic time. Keenan struggling to get around 17, does it, does it cleanly, hopes for the save for 18, does it, makes his push all the way back beautifully. Look at that time. Are you kidding me? Keenan Simpson, man, he found something in the tank right there, 137.36 for Keenan. Woo, he's got to be stoked about that run. That was beautiful, Chuck. That will put him on the national team for sure. Solidify wow. his position and may also get him a spot on the uh, Next generation team going to World Cups four and five. What a fantastic run for that gentleman, Keenan Simpson. Boy, he was struggling on the third one, and he knows he did something crazy over there. Crazy great. Congratulations to that gentleman, but it is not over yet. This is competitor number 54 on course right now. A reminder, this is the fourth of four runs, and this is the junior and U23 national team trials that we are looking at right now. These guys are enjoying a fantastic uh, day here at Kananaskis. And boy, this is a fantastic facility done up very, very nicely as we get a glimpse of the uh, gentleman, Keenan Simpson, who just fin finished a few moments ago. This gentleman here knows what he has to do. He's seen the competitors in front of him. Is it possible that we can actually see another change in the lead? Again, Andrew Musgrave, although not the start that he wanted for this fourth run, Chuck. That's a hard, oh. hard thing to come back from when you take that sort of easy hit and you just go, oh. But Keenan's got a lot of race experience. We're expecting to see him sort of pull out a good race here, overcome that little bit of challenge. And so he's been down a lot of races in the past, and he will be able to sort of overcome that, put it behind him, and concentrate on what's coming up next. Hard left-hand turn right here as he goes through an upgate and beautifully around that like butter. Nicely done for Andrew Musgrave. Beautiful line. And keep on stroking, keep him moving, keep the boat moving through where he wants to be. Another challenge ahead of him. Right beside that gate, in and out very quickly. Well executed, well done. Anders paddling out of the Ottawa Club and uh, has been racing there for a number of years now. Seven or eight years. He's in the U23 class, so it's a year up from the juniors and all the 
kids that are under 23 are racing in this group to go to the pole end as well. So they're going to the same race as the juniors. And because there's only two U23 athletes that are registered for this race, there's an opportunity for one of the juniors to move up into the U23 group. So instead of taking just the three juniors, they may be able to take the fourth junior and race them up in the U23 group. 147.3 for that gentleman, Andrew Musgrave. A few penalty points and some fantastic maneuvering through some of these gates. Will it be enough for this gentleman? Solid performance, finding his lines very well. I think it's one bad save, that's fine. Some simple little mistakes, tapping on those on those gates can cost you, cost you dearly with a couple of points. And again, you get another chance to take a look at this magnificent facility here at Kananaskis. If you ever had a chance to come out to Alberta, may we suggest this is one of your must, must stops easily. Well, we're very proud of the, the work we've been able to accomplish here and the, the support we've had from the Alberta government to make this such a great facility for whitewater kayaking. And if you're coming down here, keep in mind too, the full release is from mid-May till mid-July. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to come down here and enjoy this magnificent course like these athletes are. Riley Penner on the course with his final run. So Riley's in a solid second third place but it all depends on how he can make it make happen in this race by the way if you're looking at trying to come to the Kananaskis you can go onto the Transalto website and they will give you the times that they're releasing the water so you can know that you've got a water schedule from this time to that time to be on the water Otherwise, if you come down here without the water on, it is a dry <laughs> riverbed. <laughs> That's right. But if you see some garbage, pick it up. <laughs> Riley Penner on the course, having a great run so far, Chuck. Oh, oh, I spoke too soon. It's a simple touch, but it's just a matter of just being a little bit off that line, not being quite where you wanted to be, and that boat bow comes up, and away you take that penalty. If only you had a smaller boat. Those boats are so small. And lightweight, too. through 12 and 13 very clean looking for 14 again we talked about how close it is to the rocks a hard left hand turn two point penalty being faced right now by Riley Penner but he still has a chance of uh, getting a great great time here yeah Riley was badly injured his back was sort of out of kilter all last season so he's taken basically the whole winter off and hasn't been in his boat very much until this past week so it's amazing that he's actually able to do what he's doing uh, given where his flexibility is there's a time of 137.62, so very pleased with that. Two-point penalty, but man, he has got to be excited about that run. That was a beautiful timed run through the gates. Eh, there was that little tip, but boy, this is beautiful. He comes around, I believe this is gate number 11. Yes, look at that. How much balance he has to have, the core strength for that gentleman. Boy, that was fantastic. Stop. Absolutely loving it. Well, you know what? There we go. We've got the results. But you know what? We also have a chance, too. We mentioned J.P. Parsonage, who is on the uh, course as well, too, Riverside. Here he is with Canada's newest national team member. All right, I'm back down Waterside, joined by Trevor Boyd. Congratulations, young man. Thank you. Qualifying for the national team. How old are you? I'm 16. Okay, and how long have you been doing this for? Uh, I've been doing slalom for a couple of years, but I've been kayaking since I was seven. How'd you get in? Uh, well, I... Showed up one day and tried out, really. And they just threw you into a boat and threw you down the river? Pretty much. Excellent, uh, excellent. Well, at least you survived that. And now you've qualified for national team. How do you feel about your run today? Well, today, um, well, my first run was a little, could be a little better, but uh, <laughs> my second run was great. That was, really topped it off for me. Excellent, oh, excellent. Well, that's why you get two runs, right? Yeah. All right, so what's coming up next? Poland. Got to go okay. world championships there. That's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, how do you feel you'll do there? What's the competition like in Poland? Well, it's going to be tough. The Europeans are always a lot better than North America and South America. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough there. All right. Well, good luck, young man. Congratulations you. once again, making the national team. Trevor Boyd, back up to you guys. Thank you very much, JP. There you go. Keenan Simpson, Seamus O'Connell, Trevor Boyd, who we just heard from a few moments ago. So I'm really excited about this leaderboard right now. This is the juniors. And what it shows us right now is we've got uh, Keenan, Seamus, and Trevor all going to make the junior national team. But there is a spot now for the fourth member if they made percentages to move up onto the U23 team because we've only got two U23 athletes that are going to Poland right now. 
they will take a full complement of three if they made percentage. And they had to make it within 10% of the top score at least one of the runs. And so that would mean that either Darius or Tyler could move up onto that group. And it looks like Darius is the guy that will get that spot and he did make percentage on his runs. What a story for Darius Ramratton. Congratulations to those competitors. And how about Riley Penner and Andrew Musgrave? Yeah, they're both tied for that fourth uh, spot. They've got uh, four points each, but based upon the tiebreaker, it'll be Andrew's in the number one spot, Riley will be in second, and then we'll have Darius as the third athlete going to Poland for Krakow. Now, on top of that, we also have the opportunity for looking at who's going to go to the next generation races for World Cup four and five. They're going to World Cup number four is going to be in Prague, Czechoslovakia. World Cup number five will be in Tosin, Slovenia, and that will be Andrew, Keenan, and Riley. Fantastic. Boy, they're, they must be absolutely stoked, and why not? What a fantastic competition. This has been a lot of fun. National Kayak Team Trials Slalom Junior and U23 here from the beautiful Kananaskis River, and what a competition this has been today, too. These gentlemen, they tried our hardest, and they worked their hardest, and they showed us things that uh, maybe they didn't even know they could do. What a great day. What a great day. Well, for JP, for Chuck, my name is Phoenix. And from Kananaskis on Shaw TV, this is Chasing Limits, a glimpse into the Western Canada's action sports and a look into the personalities and the athletes that continue to chase their limits.